Good morning. Today I'm on the beautiful Pomona College campus on the Marston Quad. We're going to go back to 1910 and start part two with President Blaisdell being appointed the fourth president of Pomona College. It was 1910 and James Blaisdell had just been elected Pomona College's fourth president. It had always been the plan to build a college rivaling Oxford and Yale, but Pomona College's ragtag campus had a long way to go. The newly elected President Blaisdell inherited debts of over $135,000, an almost insurmountable amount of money in those days. But he accepted the challenge and set his sometimes unusual ideas in motion. He convinced two-thirds of the alumni to donate money and had the female students shining shoes and cleaning houses nearby. Tuition was raised to $90, and within three months, they had raised the critical $135,000 and much more. In 1911, Pomona College closed its preparatory program and deemed itself a liberal arts college and distanced itself from its evangelical constraints. In 1914, the college gates were constructed on the southwest corner of College and 6th Streets. Rembrandt Hall was also completed in 1914, along with the outdoor Greek theater. In 1915, Bridges Hall of Music was completed, made possible by a gift of $100,000 by Mr. and Mrs. Appleton Shaw Bridges in honor of their daughter, Mabel Shaw Bridges, who had died unexpectedly. It was 1920 now. President Blaisdell invited a philanthropist from La Jolla named Ellen Browning Scripps to visit the college. Scripps' fortune derived from her family's newspaper empire, and her gifts include the San Diego Natural History Museum, the Scripps Memorial Hospital in La Jolla, and the Scripps Oceanographic Institute also in La Jolla. During her visit, Blaisdell appealed to her to start a woman's college, as the number of female students had greatly increased. She provided a huge endowment and began buying properties adjacent to the college, which greatly expanded its boundaries. By 1921, the college resources had grown from 650,000 to 2.8 million. Also in 1921, construction began on Mason and Crookshank Halls. Mason Hall of Chemistry was the biggest of its day and took up an entire block between 5th and 6th Streets. In 1922, Sumner Hall, which was the original Claremont Hotel, was dismantled, turned 180 degrees, and moved about 150 yards to the east to its present location. In gratitude for the $100,000 donation from George Marston, the open space connecting all of the college main halls would be named Marston Quadrangle. In 1925, 
The Claremont Colleges Consortium was established and was the realization of Blaisdell's dream of a small group of colleges of the Oxford type. His idea proved to be revolutionary because the colleges share facilities such as libraries, health care, and security, and maintenance. Ellen Browning Scripps' donation allowed for the creation of the Claremont Graduate University, as well as Scripps Women's College. The library and other support buildings would be under the control of the Claremont University Consortium. In 1927, Claremont Graduate University opens its doors to four students and becomes the second of the seven Claremont Colleges. In the fall of 1927, Scripps College opens. The Eleanor Toll Residence Hall is built first, followed quickly by Clark and Balch Halls. Gordon Kaufman designs it as a courtyard facing inward with great walls entered through archways and wrought iron gates. About this time, a movie was shot on the Pomona campus starring Marion Davies, but the college-owned Claremont Inn wouldn't allow her and William Randolph Hearst to room together. Despite this, soon after, Hearst donated $5,000 to the college for their first tennis courts. Later that year, Blaisdell was appointed head of the Claremont College's consortium and Charles Edmonds replaced him as Pomona College's fifth president. In 1929, on the Pomona College campus, Frary Dining Hall was completed and work began on Bridges Auditorium, or Big Bridges. In 1930, on the Scripps campus, Dorsey Hall opens as a residence hall and was built very near to the famous Gutenberg window. In 1931, Bridges Auditorium was dedicated on the Pomona College campus, which provided luxurious seating for 2,500 people, roughly the entire population of Claremont at the time. In 1932, Claremont Graduate University dedicates Harper Hall. The hall is named for trustee Jacob C. Harper and designed by architect Gordon Kaufman. Over on the Scripps campus, the first swimming pool is completed at Alumni Park. In 1934, on Scripps campus, architect Kaufman designs the Margaret Fowler Garden, an enclosed medieval-style cloister garden on the east side of the campus. Recovering from the Depression, the colleges moved forward with many long-delayed construction projects. In 1936, Blaisdell Hall is completed on the Pomona campus. It's named for Florence Blaisdell, James Blaisdell's wife. It's summer 1936 and the lush grass just planted in the Scripps main quad is a gift from two students, Cynthia Criley Williams and Helen Ely Brill, who did without their desserts for two years and saved $1,500. Their Grass Before Graduation pledge inspired the annual Slocum Award, which is still given today. In 1937, the Student Union Building was opened on the Pomona campus. Nicknamed the Co-op, it housed the student newspaper, a co-op and store, along with a two-story ballroom for dances, which kept the students on campus rather than driving to a club. It was renamed Edmonds Hall in 1948 and morphed into the Smith Student Union Building. On 
March 1st, 1938, the rain began to fall, and man did it come down. In two days, over 32 inches of rain falls in the area. No dams existed yet to hold back the torrent, and Claremont was devastated. Parts of Foothill Boulevard, then Route 66, looked more like a river than a highway. The colleges were hit especially hard, and a lot of the campuses were underwater. Could they manage to rebuild after this catastrophe? As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, Keith Thomas's Beautiful California. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon. Bye now. And the script's oceanographical. And the script's oceanographical. Ocean. And the script's oceanographical. <laughs>